In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this wire golf ball bucket, which you may find at any driving range. It poses an interesting CAD challenge. I'll use Cloud Native Onshape because it's the best CAD and PDM solution on the market. And if you haven't switched to Onshape yet, you should. There's no installs, no downloads, no crashes, and PDM is built in. This design comprises six wire rings that are spot welded to bent side supports. The tricky part is modeling those side supports, but it's nothing we can't handle. So in my Chrome browser, I'll log into Onshape and create a new document. I give it a name and I get catting. Now I know this bucket is made from round wire stock of a single diameter. So the first thing I'll do is define a variable for that diameter. I can reference this variable throughout my design. I will call it G and set it to five millimeters. And you can see it appears here in the feature tree. I click on the front plane. I right mouse click to insert a sketch and I can look normal to that sketch with the N key and then I can hide all the planes with the P key. I start sketching a vertical line from the origin and I'm using the line command with construction geometry toggled on. I will size it to 180 millimeters. Then I draw an angular line to represent the outside of my bucket that will align all the centers of the rings. Now I want to add a dimension that represents the diameter of the bucket at the top and the bottom, and it's extremely easy to do. I simply dimension from the top point to the center line and place the dimension slightly to the left of the center line. On shape snaps to a diametric dimension. I'll key in 240 millimeters, and then I'll repeat the process for the bottom, keying in 140 millimeters. Now I'll use the C hotkey to switch to the circle command and draw a small circle to represent the top ring's cross section. I want this diameter to be equal to my variable G, so I'll use the pound G notation. Notice that this dimension now has an indication that a formula drives it, and it's equal to five millimeters. Now I want a total of six rings, so I'll use the sketch pattern. I'll make sure that the number of instances is set to one in the y direction and six in the x direction. But I'll delete both the spacing dimension and the horizontal constraint that are created by default so I can drag the last circle to align with my angular line and Onshape automatically keeps the spacing between the circles equal. Pretty slick. Now thinking about the side supports, I'll know they'll run parallel on the outside of my bucket and then duck in above the bottom ring. I want to sketch a few lines that represent this path. So I'll sketch another angular line that is aligned to the top ring center and is parallel to the ring center line and above the bottom ring, it'll take a hard left and run horizontally back to the vertical center line. Note that these are not construction lines because I'm gonna use them to create surfaces later. One critical thing to do now is to make sure that all the spacing is correct. I need both lines to have an offset equal to the ring's diameter, our variable G. Later you'll see that this will ensure the wires are tangent for spot welding. Now thinking ahead, I also want to create a point that represents the virtual sharp of the bend that will eventually hold the handle of the bucket. I want this point to align to the center of the circle that represents the top ring, and I want it to be 35 millimeters above it. Now let's make some 3D features. First, we'll create the rings. With a single revolve command, I pick the center line and the circular sections. Easy peasy. Notice I have six parts in the parts list. I'll set their color so they're all identical and I'll hide them for the next step. Now I'll create my construction surfaces for the side supports using the same revolve command and the same sketch. I'll just select a surface option and then choose to rotate my two lines around the same center line as the rings. I can change its color and make it transparent so it's easier to see. 
Showing all the parts, I see that the rings fit nicely in the construction geometry, and I know that however my side rails are bent, their paths will lie on the surfaces. Now I'm going to define my side support paths from a different view. I'm going to insert a sketch on the top surface. I'll need to reference the edge of the outer cone surface to terminate my lines, so I'll project it down and make it construction geometry. I'll also sketch a horizontal center line and hit the Q key to toggle the construction geometry off and then sketch the lines that represent the zigzag shape the support wire will follow at the bottom of the bucket. I'll dimension the horizontal and vertical offsets and the angle. Finally, I can use the mirror command and project everything to the other side. Let me hide the six rings and explain where we are. I've essentially created a sketch along a planar face that represents what the side rails look like from the top view. And I have revolved surfaces that represent guides for the side supports when you look at the bucket from any side. And if I can project one to the other, I should have something that looks like my desired path. To do this, I'll use the projected curve command. I'll use the sketch entities as my edges, the top plane to indicate direction, and the surface as the target. Nice. I can hide the surface, and you can see that I now have two 3D curves that represent the path of my side support. Unfortunately, they're not perfect. I need them connected above the bucket, and I need all the corners to have a nice bend radius. Luckily, Onshape's new routing curve can handle everything. So with the routing curve command, I'm going to generate my final path using the polyline setting with the bend radius set to my wire diameter. It's easy to generate this path. I'll simply choose the key vertices from the projected curves. At the top, I'll show my first sketch and choose the point I created for the eye bend. I can hide it and continue choosing the vertices on the other side. Once complete, I have a continuous 3D path with well-defined bends in the necessary places. I can hide the other two curves to make it easier to see. Next, I'll create a plane normal to this path using the plane command with the curve point option. Right at the path's endpoint, I can sketch a circle at the correct diameter once again using the pound G formula. At this point, you can probably guess what's next. I'm going to use both the sketch and the routing curve to sweep the side support shape. Not too bad. Now I like to keep things clean, so I'll hide the plane, I'll hide the routing curve, and I'll change the color of my new 3D wire work so you can easily see it against the rings. Now we don't want anyone to get scratched by the sharp edges, so I'll round each end of the side support using a small one millimeter fillet. Then, I'll use the mirror command to create its twin on the other side. I'm mirroring around the right plane. Not bad. A right mouse click allows me to show all the parts easily. We can get a look from the front plane and take the model for a spin to ensure that everything looks tangent and correct. Now let's finish this beautiful bucket by adding a handle. We can start by offsetting a plane from the top plane, and we want this to land a bit above the top ring, so 190 millimeters should do the trick. This handle just floats loose, so we need it just to be somewhere in the middle of the eyelet. I'll insert a sketch on this plane and view it from a normal perspective. I'll also hide some of the smaller rings so you can easily see what I'm doing. I'm going to build half the handle, so I need a vertical center line about 135 millimeters long. 
Next, I'm going to use the line command combined with some mouse gestures to quickly sketch my path profile. I sketch a small line using the click click method. When I drag the mouse back to the last endpoint, I'll automatically switch to a tangent arc command and I'll sketch a small arc. Then I'll use the same gesture to create a larger tangent arc that ends at my vertical center line. I'll drag the center of this large arc so it will align with the center of my bucket, and then I'll adjust the rest of the profile. I want the small radius to be 10 millimeters. The little line should be pinched so there's a gap equal to the wire diameter, pound G. And I'll also add a vertical 6 millimeter gap from the center to ensure clearance. Finally, I'll lock down the angle of my crimped area to 30 degrees. Now you can see my path. Let me zoom in a bit and rotate. I want to sweep a circle along this new path. And since it terminates right in the center, I can use the right plane. I'll draw my last little circle. I'll set its diameter to G. And I'll sweep it through all the path segments. Half handle, done. I need to mirror the other half, but there's no reason to use a separate mirror command. Instead, I'll reorder the previous mirror command to the end of my feature list, and I'll edit it to include my new handle half. To ensure that the handles are merged, I'll change the option to add, and then I'll click the built part as my feature scope. And now the completed handle is done. I can show all the parts and admire my work. In fact, I'm going to share it with my good friend and colleague, Leopold, who I know is already on the driving range. I put in his email, and I can even specify what granular permissions I want to give Leopold. I can see when he enters the document by the icon on the top of the screen, and we can work simultaneously on the same design. Now let me show you what Leopold sees, because he's on the go, and he's using Onshape's mobile app for his iPhone. I'm showing his finger actions with orange dots so you can get a sense of how he's controlling this full function CAD app on his phone. Leopold opens the document and he takes things for a spin. He's using a pinch gesture with two fingers to zoom and a single finger to rotate. Oh, and he's looking at my handle. He can browse the entire feature list. And it looks like he's reordering a fillet feature so it sits below the mirror. And now he's editing that feature to include the sharp edge on my handle. I forgot that one. To select precisely, he uses a single finger press and hold. And you can see a crosshair appears, which he uses to select the little edge. He checks that the fillet was mirrored. And now, geez, it looks like he's changing the diameter of my wire. Leopold, what are you doing? Oh, well, he's leaving a comment, telling me exactly what he did. He knows that a smaller gauge wire is more readily available and affordable. He's always thinking that, Leopold. Back in the office, I can see everything Leopold has done. and I can respond to his comment. Great. And just like that, our new product is ready for production. I hope you picked up that I was running in a browser with no software installed. I was catting fast and efficiently and sharing my work like a Google Doc with a guy on a phone. Job done. Now I'm gonna join Leopold out on the range.